Mama to B and J writes, I normally scrap older teen boys and vacations using neutral colours. I don't have any butterflies or glitter in my collection of goodies, so how do I make clusters of embellishments and a cohesive look without using flowers or sparkly bling on the page? Glitter girl, can you help Mama to B and J make a masculine masterpiece? Of course I can. This week I thought I would start with showcasing a few different paper collections, even though I'm not going to use all these papers by any means, that work really well for masculine pages. Just some things that strike my eye as not being really girly and being a bit more versatile. Now they're not all very, some sort of stereotypically manly man, um, paper design so the idea is that they're quite neutral and you can dress them up however you like so they could go masculine they could go feminine they could go um, for the whole family and things like that so this first one is called yearbook it's from studio calico and it has quite a muted color scheme and no flowers no pink so here are quite a few of the design. So there's olive, there's turquoise, and there's red, plus some gray and brown in the mix. Lots of numbers, letters, wood grain, circle designs. And then here's the other side. So that letter print in another color, some chevron, some grids, a little bit of polka dot, and some scallop. But um, that's a yearbook. That's definitely one that. Um, it's certainly not a girly collection. And Studio Calico, a lot of their papers don't scream girl. They don't have a lot of pink and not a lot of butterflies and things like that. Um, they also do the, the classics collections that are gray and craft and black. Um, so those are all uh, worth a look. So that's Studio Calico yearbook. This next one is Wren from Jenny Bolin Studio. And this is a different take um, on what strikes my eye as a masculine paper because this is more, um, well, it's, it's a blueprint, an architectural style drawing. Something different than what we've seen in lots of other scrapbook papers. It's included as a 12 by 12 or as a 4 by 4. And this is the first collection that Jenny's had this royal blue color. And I, I love the blue in this collection. There's some red as well and then some vintage papers. So if you just wanted to pick up the most masculine, I would say that blueprint and then the one with the the smaller patterns, and then the accent sheet, which has labels and borders and journaling cards that you can cut apart. But the rest of the collection is certainly worthwhile as well. There are red circles, some vintage book prints, typing diagrams and words, old vintage labels. There's this one that's a lace print. And that's the back of the labels. But that's really the only one that I would say is, is feminine. The rest could all be taken masculine. And they'd certainly work with heritage pages as well. But you can use Jenny Bolin papers with modern photos, most definitely. So that's Jenny Bolin Wren. Like the bird, Wren. This one is Basic Gray Clippings. So this has a color scheme that has a lot more vintage tone to it. So if you like distressed papers, this is a good collection for you. There's lots of green, aqua, red again. There's a lot of red at the moment, which um, for a while we didn't have many many true reds in, the, in collections coming out. So it's nice to see red making a comeback. Um, so some fabric textures, some nice distressed solids, but not a girly color palette. Definitely um, neutrals and a few masculine shades. I'll show you the other sides of all these, if I can. There we go. So there's a bit more feminine on some of the other sides. So there is one floral and this one which has um, a patchwork of all the different papers in the collection put together. Um, but this side certainly doesn't have anything floral on it. There's a letter print that could be used whole or cut apart into pieces and this one has um, that same print that exists elsewhere in the collection the fabric print but this time with stitches over the top lots of layers in this collection different pieces that you can either build on top of or cut out and add in with others and um, yeah so that one's if you like if you like distressed papers and and lots of layering that is basic gray clippings and that would certainly work with lots of boy, um, 
giveaway pages. This one's called Chap and it's from American Crafts. This one um, has a bit of a retro graphic style. There's almost a hint of, of Mad Men inspiration in the Mad Men, the TV show, not crazy people. And the uh, the kind of, there there's a mid-century graphic look to the way some of the shapes, some of them are a bit more classic, just polka dots and stripes, um, but some of these kind of angled drawings and ovals and things like that, so a little... A little retro color scheme has red and aqua, a mustardy yellow, and a gray. All the papers have a little bit of a an, a creamy gray, really pale, but creamy gray uh, background rather than a stark white. Lots of stripes and cross hatches. And here's the other side. We've got some ledger and graph paper, um, and then a few more bold designs. Uh, in circles and squares and things like that. Definitely one that can work um, with boys but could also work with other things as well. So that's Chap from American Crafts. And this one is a bit more um, a bit more along the lines of what we used to call masculine papers which tended to be about fishing or hunting or things like that. This one is more about um, outdoors. So this is Take a Hike from Simple Stories. And I, don't, I, I feel bad calling this just a masculine paper. I think if you are um, female and into camping or hiking, you're still going to like this collection. So um, don't think that it's just masculine. But if you look at the Simple Stories, for example, if you compare this to their Autumn, their Harvest Lane collection, this one is a lot more masculine. We don't have um, kind of the, the floweriness to the lettering and, um, and in the designs, the, the fonts are more masculine in that they're more slab type fonts and thick lettering, straight lettering, no curvy bits and things like that. Um, so this has lots of bits and pieces that you can cut out and has a bit more traditional brown, orange and green outdoor color scheme. And it comes in all those different sizes and there are more um, papers in this collection, I just have these three, but there are certainly the full 12 by 12s and, and all sorts of other designs. So that is Take a Hike by Simple Stories. So those collections are all in the Chew Peas shop right now. So anything there that strikes your fancy would work easily for boy pages. And here's a little sampling of embellishments. And um, you specifically asked about making clusters and that sort of embellishing style without using things that are flowery or feminine. And so I pulled out all different sorts of things that you can layer easily that to me are not feminine. So Brad's, um, okay, there's one on this set that has flowers on it. But Brad's in general, unless they're pink or glittery, are not very feminine. And, and they certainly work well with boy pages. That one's from Basic Great Clippings. Things like labels and file notes and things like that definitely are not, um, it's not overly girly, things like that. So these are the doodads, which um, October Afternoon has in several different collections. This one's from 9 to 5, but they have different colors for different collections. Things that are um, made from wood are a bit uh, less soft and feminine. So Jilly Bean Soup does different word flags. And of course, there's also the veneers from Studio Calico that come in lots of different shapes, including little stars and tabs and things like that. And label stickers, unless they have girly designs on them, label stickers in general, there's, there's nothing... Uh, too girly, just about a general label. So I've pulled out some that don't have uh, girly, uh, girliness to the design they're on. So um, things with, with plain lettering and, um, okay, there's one heart here, but I think we can get away with that. Uh, flag tags like this, these are from Jenny Bolin. They come in a pack with all different sizes and they come in craft or white. So those are definitely usable for little clusters of things. And also from Jenny Bolin, the hexagon stickers, these are called memo quilted stickers. And there's a few other companies that do hexagon shaped stickers as well, so I'll link those up in the product list. The yearbook collection includes um, journaling cards, so those match um, the papers that I've already shown you. I think with things like flair, that's like a label. Unless there's something girly in the design, the, the item itself is not feminine. So um, 
Things like this, these are the new flare pieces from the Amy Tangerine Ready, Set, Go, which includes both the epoxy and the engraved metal, um, or the more traditional badge style. Lots of different ones like that in the store. And these, these are called um, stencil cards. They, are, they come in packs of 10 from Fancy Pants, and they come in different themes, so you get different words, and you can choose which words are most useful to you. And you get um, the outline plus these letters are included too. So every word you can include twice um, on two separate pages or if you want to repeat it on the same page, all the pieces are there. So these are on manila cards. You can customize them any way you want. You can stamp on them, you can ink them, you can mist them, you can paint them, anything you want to do. You can sew right over them. Anything you could do to a piece of manila cardstock, which is pretty much anything you can do to these. They're just already pre-cut with different words. And I'm going to use that stamp set that I showed a couple weeks ago. Again, this is called Jared, and it has just four really nice, bold stamps. A chevron, a grid, a thank you, and a little compass. So I'm going to use this again today, but with a masculine page. For this particular page, I'm starting with two landscape 4x6 photos, and I'm attaching them in the top, uh, top left corner, and just rounding one corner because then I'm going to round the four corners of the layout, but not all the other pieces. And I'm just working on a background of craft cardstock. And then I've chosen some of those papers that I just showed you. So from that bigger collection, I've picked up a green number print, a stripe with multicolors, the red lettering, some red circles, and that blue, um, the blue blueprint page. <laughs> so those are the papers that I'm thinking I will use on this page. I may dip back into the stack if something doesn't work quite as I imagine it, but that's the idea. Now one of my first steps that I tend to do with masculine pages is I tend to make them a bit blockier. And it does mean that you can include more photos on a masculine page if you if you want to include more pictures on the page because you don't necessarily need as much room for all the extra bits. I think when we start to add lots more pieces like lace and ribbon and um, butterflies and, and, and gems and all that, that, those are the feminine things and they take up quite a bit of room on the page. So if you're wanting a more masculine look, it may be a case of um, just paring back a little bit so that you have a bit blockier um, style and that way you can include more photos if you want. You could um, easily make this three or um, you could double this over here and cheat the, the six inch width just a little bit and have four. Things like that. Try to um, have a look at, at your page and see if you want to just keep with one or two, three pictures or if you like the look of, um, of going to more images on the page. Now I'm going to block the background so that I use different pieces of pattern paper to fill this um, remaining space. So what I do is put the paper up to the place it's going to go and then mark off where I want to trim the paper until I get it into the right um, shape to, to all fit. So you're just looking at spaces like how big is this space, how big is this corner piece, and how big is this corner piece. And you can divide that up into as many or as few different pieces as you want. So you can make this all sorts of pieces or you could cut all of it from one. But that's basically where I start if I'm really conscious about making a page that's not going to be girly. Here's that starting point with just three pieces of paper and cut to fit the rest of the the page. So it's just a case of blocking out different spaces on the page. Now in order to get that frame right around the edge I end up sometimes with a little gap or overlap here where I don't get the measurements absolutely perfect. But that's okay because I tend to just include something that will cover that gap and it ends up being quite a nice finishing touch to bring it all together anyway. So it has double purpose in that it will hide any slight errors there in the measurement but also that it will bring all the colors together. So all those other patterns that I've used so far are all single colored prints, but this multicolored print includes the green, the red, and the blue. So, and I've used um, three different collections here. These two are from Yearbook, this one's from Chap, and that one's from Jenny Bowen Wren. So um, it's handy to have 
one multicolor that you can use to pull all those other different colors from. So now I have my page covered. It's a case of figuring out what different elements I want to layer on top of this and um, I promise not to use any glitter and no flower. One of the pieces I want to use in my embellishment is this stenciled letter, um, stenciled word. So I'm just going to put it on the table so that I can do a little bit of customizing to that. I'm going to use some green ink to match the green pattern paper that I've included and I'm using the big grid stamp in the Jared stamp set. And I'm not too worried about getting this perfect, but if you prefer your designs to be absolutely spot on, you can go very slowly and carefully and stamp um, with the clear block so that you can line it up absolutely perfectly, but I'm okay with it being close enough. And this little stamp is, um, it's just shy of the full width of the die cut. So what I'm going to do is just cut the die cut slightly smaller. So I don't have to worry about that little lining up the stamp again to get that tiny little edge. So I have my grid stamped on here and then I'm going to take some ink and this is the navy blue Mr. Huey. This is called Passport. And just drop some navy blue on top of this card. Then once that dries, it'll only take a minute, you can see it soaking into the paper. Just cut the um, extra off the card and then add a little bit of brown ink to all um, all four sides and then that uh, that little die cut it takes on a new look with the colors that I've used on my to finish this piece I'm going to add another bit of pattern paper behind because when I place it on my page I prefer all of the same pattern to show through I need to trim this a little bit and um, because if it's different patterns um, showing through the letters and maybe with gaps, for example, if this were another pattern paper and the gaps were there, um, either it needs to be done purposely so that the lines are straight or match up, um, or, it can, if, or it can be very difficult to read. So what I prefer is to just make it a little easier on myself by making it a piece like this where I know I can just pick it up and move it all over the layout until I'm happy with it and not worry about which patterns are going to show up behind those letters. Now with the page all set in a grid, I can just start finding layers from what I've pulled out to try and start adding them in to see where things will fit. I tend to start from this outside edge and line things up and then work my way in so that other pieces come right to this center piece. So I can just place them one on top of the other and sometimes works well to overlap a little bit if the edge of the photo isn't something particularly important or in this case that corner is a little bit too blurry to see what's there anyway. And I'm just going through all those different pieces that I mentioned at the beginning that I pulled out thinking they're not very girly so these could all certainly work for um, a masculine layout and looking for ways that they can layer. So the same sort of techniques that I would use when things are very girly and, and filled with bling and butterflies and that I'm just looking for gaps. So for example, when I'm looking here at where I'm going to layer this, I can see this gap here and then use that yellow line to guide the placement of this piece. I've also cut out some of the flare pieces uh, and just left the plastic backing so that I can move things around and see exactly the space they're going to take up but without having to commit to adhering them just yet. Got some date labels, things like that. And so here, there's a gap between the important notice and the star, and it's about the same size as this label. So I'll add that 
just there. So this is the same sort of technique. I do tend to have larger elements on a masculine page and I'm not sure if that's purposeful or coincidental and just that the things that tend to be more masculine are slightly larger items because they're not as delicate. Either is pretty much possible. So I have three round items so I kind of want to separate them around the page. So look for three good spots to add these. I wasn't sure if I would be adding any more here. I'm thinking this is the best place for the journaling because this is the easiest of those patterns to write on. So I want to save some space here for my writing. Um, and I want to add a little bit more to the title here. I'll use this word you as part of the title and build on top of that. To start the journaling, I wanted to use this label sticker, but change the wording slightly. So I've just cut it into two pieces, and then I'm going to use some mini market letter stickers over the top. So I can cover up the middle word and replace it with the word that I want to use. So just start putting the letters on so that I can get the spacing right. So that also gives me another element I can repeat. So I can take another label sticker and include it somewhere else on the page. Perhaps I can mirror that and move it right down to the bottom so that I have this vertical column that I'm working with. So I want to go ahead and include my writing and then I will add the finishing touches to the embellishment on top of that. In terms of masculine lettering, I have to admit I really, really wanted to use some glittery red thickers in the title, but I said no glitter, so I've gone back to the drawing board. And this set from the original Amy Tangerine collection, um, you can customize it to any color because it takes ink really well, or you can use it as is, and it's definitely one that works well with masculine pages. So I'm going to add that to finish my title. To finish, I'm just going to focus on those la the label stickers and the little round elements. So I've added one label sticker at the bottom, and there's already one at the top, so I'm going to add one here in the middle as well. And in fact, originally I thought there, but I think this need I want to make sure this title piece feels connected, so I'm just going to tuck this under here. Just trying to push it over as far as I can without obscuring the journaling. That'll work there. And then I have three of the round pieces. Now this green is such a different green to what's up here that I want to separate that. So I'm straight away gonna, going to take this one to the bottom of the page. So I've used that label with the heart, but you can't tell that it has a heart anymore in case hearts are, are too girly for your liking. Then I think this one in the middle and this one toward the top of the page and I'm going to just overlap this so it touches the photo, the paper, the journaling, and the label sticker. And then this one so that it overlaps this lettering block, the label sticker, and that journaling block that's behind. I have two little stars from that same font, so I can bring these in as well. And if I place this one over toward this edge, then that pattern that pattern of chipboard makes kind of a triangle shape with the title and the journaling in the middle. And then I think some of the little wood veneer stars to bring everything just absolutely as finished as I can get it today. So I'll just scatter these here and there. And the wood veneer is really light so you can just adhere it with with most any glue. You can use a liquid glue if you prefer, but I just use the dots off the permanent dot roller and I don't have any trouble. Everything I've attached that way has stayed for me, but um, use the glue that, that you like best and what works for your pages. Other masculine things you can put in, and I do, I keep saying masculine and I, I feel a bit silly because there are certainly ways you could use these same techniques for feminine pages and I don't think that every single page needs to be identified as either masculine or feminine. There certainly there's certainly room for a lot of crossover. And um, but 
things like the paint splatters and um, stars certainly work well. I know a lot of um, companies went through a phase where we had lots of gears and mechanical parts for boy papers and then for younger boy papers we had quite a few robots and and monsters under the bed kind of things and you just kind of have to judge how that works with the people in your photos if if there's somebody that would connect well to to gears or monsters under the bed then you've got a winner and if not keep looking and and find the piece that you really like I think uh, my last little gap is this space here so I think I'll find a word stamp or or a little picture stamp that will fit in that gap and then I will be all done. I found two small stamps that would work well in this set which is an exclusive um, here at Two Peas but by Studio Calico. There's a small one here that says this is an adventure and then also this little checkbox that says go see do and since this is a travel page both of those work quite well. I'm going to stamp in black ink since that's what I wrote the journaling in and add one of these to the label here and then another to that craft tag. There we go. No glitter, no flowers. Um, I think I've I've stuck within all the rules that uh, that we set forth in that little discussion on the message board. So your challenge this week is to make a page that is masculine and share your techniques for making boy pages, and they might be. Um, little kids or they might be husbands, grandfathers, anything that um, is masculine can go. So you try your best at something with layers but no glitter and no flowers and no gems and those were the rules set out for me so try time for you to try the same challenge. I hope you'll share your work with us in the gallery and thanks so much for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.